The SCP Foundation is full of inanimate objects that when touched will terminate you in seconds. However, out of all these objects, SCP-409 is perhaps one of the most terrifying due to the brutal effects that it causes in humans. 409 appears to be a large crystal, approximately 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall and 2 feet or 60 centimeters wide. SCP-409 is colorless and semi-transparent. It is very brittle and tests have revealed that its surface is a 7 on the mass scale. Also, microscopic observations have revealed that SCP-409 has a crystalline structure and that it is composed of silicium dioxide which is the formula for quartz. Furthermore, SCP-409's weight appears to be consistent with that of similar crystals of the same size, and all of these properties combined make SCP-409 indistinguishable from any other quartz crystal. However, 409's effects quickly become apparent when it comes into contact with any other object. This is because anything that touches SCP-409's surface will begin to crystallize approximately 3 hours after the initial contact. As such, after this period, the particles of the affected object will begin to rearrange in such a way so as to match the structure of SCP-409. This process will then spread at a speed of around 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters per minute and will eventually convert the entire object inside and out. And this effect isn't only limited limited to inanimate objects, because SCP-409 can also affect organic matter and even humans. And of course, as you can imagine, this process is very brutal. Infected subjects report this to be extremely painful and compare the pain to that of frostbite. However, this doesn't last very long, because sooner or later, the crystallization reaches a vital human organ and the victim expires. And in in less than 90 minutes, the human has been transformed into a crystallized human sculpture that is usually still screaming. However, SCP-409's properties don't end there. This is because shortly after the crystallization is complete, the object will begin to make snapping and cracking noises for approximately 20 minutes before bursting into thousands of fragments with great force. This explosion is very powerful, and given that the quartz shrapnels are very hard and abrasive, such explosions usually lead to great containment damage. But to top things off, anything that is touched by or that touches a fragment will also begin to crystallize, something which makes SCP-409 extremely contagious. And finally, so far, nothing has been able to reverse this effect in organic matter, including amputation of affected areas. As for its discovery, SCP-409 was recovered from a redacted location, where it was laying under a pile of crystal shards several feet deep. And, of course, given that the Foundation was not aware of 409's effects at the time, the losses of personnel during recovery were very high. So you may be wondering, if anything that is touched by SCP-409 turns into a crystal and explodes, then how is a physical containment even possible? Well, luckily, after testing various materials, the Foundation discovered that SCP-409 does not affect granite. As such, a granite container was built and the crystal was contained. But despite the extensive testing, no information as to why the crystallization occurs has been revealed. The effect appears to be similar to that of a seed crystal, a real-life phenomenon where a pre-existing crystal formation is added to a solution, causing the crystal to grow. SCP-409, however, appears to do this with all solid matter and does not need to remain in contact. How this is done, why SCP-409 is unique among all other quartz crystals, and why granite is the only immune material are all unknown. 
having achieved containment of SCP-409. The Foundation reduced the amount of tests, but despite of this, a few interesting experiments were still performed. On one occasion, a D-Class was exposed to SCP-409, and as expected, after a few hours, the subject quickly began to crystallize. This process was left to advance for a few hours, until 409 had crystallized more than half of the victim's body, but then the D-Class was administered a pill of SCP-500, which as you probably know can cure any disease. And amazingly, the subject began to recover. The process was very slow, and the D-Class continued to feel severe pain for several days, but nonetheless, in 9 days, a complete recovery was achieved. But most notably, on one occasion, SCP-409 was tested with SCP-682. But before the experiment, the walls of the testing chamber were layered with granite in order to prevent the walls from converting. And after removing 6A2 from the pool of hydrochloric acid, the agents transferred the reptile to the testing chamber. But in the meantime, a ball of steel was infected with SCP-409 and was also inserted into the chamber. Of course, this surprised SCP-682 and for good reason, because a ball of steel isn't the most threatening thing in the world. The ball then began to produce the usual cracking and popping noises, something which confused 6A2 even more. However, shortly afterward, it exploded, and as expected, some of the shrapnel hit the reptile's body. Immediately after, SCP-682 began to scratch at the points of contact with its claws, causing massive physical trauma to the affected areas. And in the meantime, the reptile repeatedly asked what it had been exposed to in a worried tone. A few minutes later, SCP-682 stopped scratching, but it remained restless and began pacing around the chamber, growling occasionally. But four hours later, the crystallization began, though at a much slower rate than usual. The reptile tried to scratch at the affected areas once again, but 6A2 quickly gave up, likely due to the immense pain associated with the process. Instead, the reptile panted motionlessly and growled occasionally. However, as the crystallization advanced, the pain increased, and after 4 hours, SCP-6A2 was in so much pain that it began having seizures. This continued for another 60 minutes, at which point the crystallization stopped at around 60%, but then out of nowhere, the affected area exploded, causing massive physical trauma to the reptile, and unsurprisingly, SCP-6A2 fell unconscious as a result, having lost around half of its body. Body. But one hour later, it regained consciousness and began to regenerate at a rapid rate. And as expected, 6A2 became angry. It stated that it will consume all staff involved with this test and the reptile began to breach containment. And subsequent tissue tests have revealed that the reptile has become immune to the crystal. So as we see, even though the termination attempt was a failure, SCP-409 still injured 6A2 quite badly, and let's not forget about the effects this crystal causes in humans. As such, SCP-409 is definitely one of the most dangerous inanimate objects in the Foundation. If you enjoyed this video, then go watch our SCP-6A2 vs. 524 video, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.